Ready for a deep dive? Today, we're taking a closer look at the anime film Look Back. We're basing this deep dive on info from TMDBB. You know, the movie database. Yeah, like a Wikipedia, but mm -hmm. uh, specifically for movies and television, release dates, cast lists, all that good stuff. A really valuable resource. For sure. And for Look Back, TMDB gives us a pretty interesting starting point. Mm -hmm. So released in 2024, this animated drama clocks in at 58 minutes. The original Japanese title is Dare Legally, if anyone wants to you know, break that out at a party. I'm sure that'll go over well. And uh, the film was written and directed by Kiyotaka Oshiyama. And I got to say, this film made a splash at the box office. Oh, yeah. Over $10 million, which is, you know, nothing to sneeze at, especially for an animated film outside, like the big American market. Really yeah. speaks to the, I don't know, the global reach of anime these days. Yeah, absolutely. And speaking of reach, Look Back is actually based on a manga, which adds, I don't know, a whole other dimension to this, wouldn't you say? Definitely, yeah. Adapting something from a static, like panel-by-panel -panel format to a moving, dynamic film. That's an art form in itself. For sure. For sure. Okay, so let's get into the story a little bit. We have our two main characters, Fujino and Kiyomoto. Yeah. Fujino is, you know, your classic popular girl, outgoing, life of the party, naturally gifted at art. And then you have Kiyomoto, who's much more, I don't know, reserved, a bit of a loner, even skips school sometimes, but also incredibly talented. Yeah. So you have this kind of classic opposites attract dynamic, but with like an artistic twist. <laughs> have you seen this dynamic play out, you know, in your own creative circles? Oh, all the time. It's that, I don't know, that tension between wanting to stand out, be recognized for your work, but then also finding inspiration in people who share your passions. It can be really motivating in both good and bad ways, I think. Yeah, no, totally. Makes you wonder how that plays out in the film. There's this deeper exploration there of, you know, finding your own voice artistically, but also recognizing how much other people influence yeah. and shape us. It's funny, right? Because we often think of like, artistic genius as this solitary thing, but so much of it comes from collaboration, even indirectly, you know? Yeah. Bouncing ideas off each other, challenging each other to grow, that's where the magic happens. Totally, totally. Now, digging into the TMDB data here, one keyword that really jumped out was shounen. Now, typically that term is used for manga that's aimed at, you know, a younger male demographic. Think like action pack adventures, lots of friendship and rivalry, Good amount of humor thrown in there. But here's the thing. Our main characters, Fujino and Kimoto, mm. both female. So are we looking at a film that's like subverting those shounen conventions? It's definitely possible. You see that a lot in anime films playing with genre conventions. Look Back could be doing something really interesting there. It kind of goes back to that question of like how much does genre even matter anymore? Those lines are definitely getting blurrier and blurrier. That's a great point. And then there's also the keyword manga artist, which I love. Talk yeah. about meta, right? A film about making manga based on a manga. Layers on layers. Right. It's like holding up a mirror to the entire art form. Yeah. Makes you wonder what the film is trying to say about the industry itself. Definitely. Will be really interesting to see if Look Back gets into like the realities of that life, you know? The long hours, creative blocks, pressure to perform. But then also, you know, the passion, the dedication, the joy of bringing those stories to life. And that joy, hopefully it outweighs, you know, some of the tougher aspects of the job. Yeah, for sure. Although, speaking of which, the film's content score on TMDB is a 76. Which, you know, it's good, but it's not like oh, amazing. Makes you wonder what's bringing that score down a bit. Right. What's resonating or not resonating with viewers. Exactly. Could be the animation style, maybe. Or the pacing. Yeah. Or maybe some people just didn't connect with the whole manga artist thing as much. It's always so subjective, right? What yeah. works for one person might not work for another. Totally. That's why we always say, you know, don't just take our word for it. Go out, watch the film, form your own opinions. 100%. Now, speaking of things we want you to explore, let's talk about some of the, I don't know, the missing pieces we found on TMDB, like the cast list, for example. It's pretty bare bones. Yeah, we're missing some key players, it seems. Right, like we know the lead voice actresses, Yumi Kawai as Fujino, and Mizuki Yoshida as Kiyomoto. Both incredibly talented, by the way. Oh, absolutely. But beyond that, total mystery. Who else is voicing these characters? Are there any like big cameos we should be looking out for? I guess we'll have to watch and find out. Adds a little extra suspense, doesn't it? Right. And speaking of suspense, the title itself, Look Back, it definitely hints at something, right? Like there's this element of reflection, maybe even nostalgia especially given the whole artist angle. Yeah. Do you think there's a layer of like looking back on the creative process itself, 
past inspirations, influences, maybe even mistakes? Oh, I'm sure of it. I mean, how could there not be? The journey of an artist, it's all about growth, evolution. You're constantly refining your style, your perspective based on, you know, everything that came before. It's like each piece you create is informed by all the pieces that came before it. Exactly. And I think that's something look back is probably exploring in its own way how our relationship with art with each other changes over time how we mature it could be all of those things that's what's so cool about stories like this they can operate on so many different levels mm -hmm. it's fascinating to think about you know how look back fits into this larger conversation about anime and manga is it a love letter to the classics is it trying to subvert those tropes mm -hmm. or is it doing something completely new and different? It's like Look Back isn't just a standalone film. It's part of this much bigger, ever-changing world. And that evolution is really something yeah. to think about, right? Like, how does Look Back contribute to that evolution? Is it tr trying to say something new? That's the real question, isn't it? We're like, we've been given this treasure map. Ooh, I like that. But instead of leading to, you know, buried gold or whatever, right. it points us towards a deeper understanding of art itself, creativity, maybe even ourselves a little bit. And like any good treasure hunt, the real reward is the journey. 100%. The searching, the questioning. The piecing together of clues. That's how we grow. Yeah, totally. It makes you appreciate all the work that came before, too. Right. Like all the artists who paved the way and how much of an impact they had on what we're seeing today. It's true. Art doesn't just appear out of nowhere. It's, it's all connected. A culmination of influences, experiences. This big ongoing conversation. Exactly, between creators and audiences. Love that. Well, as we wrap up this deep dive on Look Back, I think we're left with one pretty big question to ponder. The big one. How does this film speak to your own creative journey? Ooh, good one. What resonates with you? What new perspectives does it offer? And we want to hear from you. Absolutely. Seek out, look back, experience it for yourselves. Explore the world of manga and anime. See what treasures you find out there. There's a whole world waiting to be discovered. And until next time, keep those imaginations curious. Yeah, and those conversations flowing.